Welcome to Health Tech Hustle. We exist to share stories of the brave entrepreneurs helping to solve the most important problems in digital health today. We interview top leaders in health tech and bring them onto our show each week to listen and learn from their story. With your host, Rodney Hu, founder of 209 Digital. Hello and welcome to another episode of Health Tech Hustle. Today I am joined by a very special guest. We have a female entrepreneur in the house, Ms. Stacy Kirk. She is a CEO of Quality Works, which is a top-rated software consulting firm. It was rated a top-rated firm in 2018 and 2019. And she is also the CEO of Posture, which is a HIPAA security and privacy officer for hire. And so you can hire them to build a strong compliance program for your company. And so with that being said, Stacey, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Rodney. Glad to be here. No problem. So then let's just get uh, right into it. Why don't you just give a little background of who you are and how you got into health tech? Yeah, sure. Well, I always had a passion for technology. I've uh, had over a 22-year career in tech right out of college. And I found myself going through a few different channels to health tech. And in 2000 and about seven or 2008, I uh, started working at Zinx Health, which focuses on evidence-based care to lead up their software development team. So I got an opportunity to work with a lot of great technology and, and how it impacts patients and also doctors. Awesome. Awesome. So I see that you're working on, you're the CEO of a company called Posture. Can you kind of give us more background about that and how you came up on that idea and bringing that idea to life? Yeah. So in the last 10 years, I started my company, Quality Works, which really is focused on consulting with many different companies that have a focus outside of technology, but really need to identify the best practices of improving their tech organization. I've been very fortunate to work with a few healthcare tech. And one consistent problem that I found for all small, medium businesses, and especially healthcare tech, was their ability to, or their inability to grow because of them not having HIPAA compliance and not actually having all that they needed to even understand how to start and how to really secure their organization. And because of that, they were losing out on opportunities to work with hospitals and larger buyers because they couldn't afford the high costs of consultancy or they couldn't afford to have an on-site security officer. And so with that in mind, we started to create Posture, a place in a location where you could hire a security officer and they be a partial security officers for $99 a month. You get an opportunity to build your HIPAA compliance program. And so kind of like the QuickBooks, we consider ourselves the QuickBooks of HIPAA compliance, you have an opportunity to have a dedicated officer that uses the best practices that we've built in our organization as we've helped people with digital transformation to get compliant as soon as 30 days. Awesome. So you were really, you started off working with other companies in the industry and doing so, you're able to identify a common problem that kept occurring because health technology is different than your average technology or SaaS company because you have to deal with HIPAA compliance and different set of rules and regulations. And so you're able to see the common problem that these companies are facing and there was really no solution to that problem. So in essence, you just went out and created this company to help other people solve that. Yeah. I, I, being a small business my, as myself, I am very empathetic to what it takes to grow your company and the many hats that you have to wear. And this is, and HIPAA compliance, HIPAA requires you to have a privacy and security officer. And for a small, medium business, that's almost impossible to do. And so it's a barrier that we wanted to solve. We wanted to solve it for ourselves because we work with many healthcare tech and we work with health plans. And we wanted to do it in a way that leverages artificial intelligence, predictive analytics, uses the best practices around agile teams to really create something that was really efficient, time effective, because we know that entrepreneurs don't have the time or to focus on HIPAA when they're also trying to focus on either patient care or growing their company. Nice. So 
you're essentially just taking over that whole department, so to say, for the business owners so that they can focus on working on their business instead of having to wear all the hats. Like you said, they're able to just delegate the whole HIPAA compliance tasks over to you and your company. Yeah, that's correct. And so there are companies that will do that for you, but normally they charge thousands of dollars and it really eliminates other small businesses from being able to leverage that service. So we wanted a price point that we think um, all small businesses can afford, small and medium-sized businesses can afford, that will allow them to maintain their compliance. Because one of the things that is uh, misunderstood when I talk to a lot of healthcare tech entrepreneurs is that HIPAA compliance is not a one and done. You don't check off you know, and say, I don't have to think about this again for another year or so. I mean, it really is a state that you need to stay in. And so you need to have policies and practices in place where you're continually monitoring. And so that's what makes it even more difficult that you can't just say, okay, I'm going to pay this one-time price and get it done. And then I don't have to think about it again. And so that added complexity is what we manage for them. Nice. That's awesome. So really helping these small and medium sized businesses, because that's something that's very, that's a very important aspect of growing the business in this industry. And it's not something that people ideally like to focus on, but they know that they need to focus on it. So that's a very interesting point. And so my question is, how does your company provide more value to the compared to these other companies? And how are you able to separate yourself cost-wise where these other companies are charging thousands where yours is it's more affordable yeah i think our value proposition is one we still have the expertise before working for zinc's health and the health tech i worked at semantic and cybersecurity my founder has 20 years of cybersecurity experience in the small medium-sized business space and so what you get is the expertise of, of many years in this industry, but why we're able to make it so affordable is because we are leveraging tools that maybe haven't been used before in compliance. When you think of compliance, I think of like someone with a clipboard and glasses, you know, going through and checking off a long list. And we don't live in that stage anymore. We live in a, a digital space now where we have to be more efficient with everything we do. And I don't think the compliance world has caught up with that. And so posture is that solution that has caught up with the rest of technology and uses those tools to make it so that we don't have to repeat the same thing over and over again and really be more efficient. Um, in my background around automation, we were, were able to generate policies very quickly um, just to speed up what normally would take um, a long time and, and make it costly for other providers other, other than Posture. Oh, that's interesting. So you're using automation, and then I heard you mention like artificial intelligence. And so by leveraging pretty much the advancements of technology and these new strategies and tactics, this is how you're able to make your processes more efficient and in return, making the whole HIPAA process and stuff like that for the companies easier on their end as well. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. So can you kind of talk about how you came to grow in this company. I know that like, you have the knowledge, you have the expertise in the background, and you've been working with health tech companies before, but can you kind of speak on the team that you kind of put into place to help you bring this idea to life? Yeah, absolutely. I will tell you, and you know, for any tech entrepreneur, any entrepreneur that's coming up with a product and a solution and wants to solve it for the SMB space and make something that's normally thought of as very complicated, easy, it's very difficult to do. And so we've gone through many, we've gone through iterations of really trying to figure out, is this easy enough? Is this simple enough? And so we've spent about a year going through that with our beta users to really figure that out. And so I'm fortunate to own Quality Works, which is a team of amazing consultants that are software developers. So what is mostly difficult for entrepreneurs is to find that tech side, the tech team. I had the tech team, but what we didn't have was the algorithm for 
making this easy and simple. And so I reached out to find someone that could complement my experience. And that's how I met my co-founder who had experience with this specific space and their challenges and how to overcome them. And so once I was able to add him to the team as uh, an expert in cybersecurity and privacy, along with the um, development team that I had from Polyworks, we were able to really begin to, to see more success and see that we really are able to now solve this problem in a very easy and simple way. Nice. So you essentially just leveraged your already existing entity that you had in Quality Works and just took the talent from there to try to create something new, but then also bring in different talents that you needed to help actually grow it and complement what you weren't as skilled at. So you went and found somebody who's skilled at that part and brought him in to make it a whole piece. Yeah, absolutely. And I I always encourage people. I mean, I have a tech mind and, you know, sometimes you need someone that uh, you don't owe. What's easy for a tech mind may not necessarily be easy for, you know, someone that is normally been in a paper-based business. If you think of a lot of doctor offices, not a lot of them, you know, there are, there's some that are still not digital. And so saying that it looks like we've got a, something great here, um, I'll say version one or version 0.0 probably didn't hit the mark, but we've now um, brought in enough uh, users that have those diff- come from those different perspectives that we're able to do it. And we're pretty excited about it. Okay, that's pretty cool. Because I know in health tech, there's really three different areas when it comes to business. You obviously have the business side, then you have the technology side, but then you also have the healthcare side. And so yeah. you have to put all three of these pieces together in, in order to be able to check off each part of the list that you need in order to grow a company. So do you have anybody in your team who deals with like the healthcare aspects or who has like the healthcare expertise? Well, both myself working at Zinc's Health had an opportunity to work with all types of providers from the from doctors to the covered entities, to business associates that we worked with. And, and so does my co-founder. Um, so he's adjunct professor around cybersecurity and he's brought in and a lot of his work has been with within healthcare and HIPAA as well. And so We've had that experience, but I think, you know, it's, all, it's always good to have more. And so as we grow, we'll, based on our needs, we'll, we'll continue to, to grow in that, that area and bring on some more um, heavy hitters. Oh, interesting. So another thing I was thinking about while I was listening to you talk is like, you have your team in place, you've created this product and you are essentially more affordable than like the more expensive consultants. How did you go about creating your business model, whether it's like charging people on a per project basis or monthly? And how did that all kind of come to fruition? Yeah, the um, thanks for asking. I think business model is one of the things that you're validating all every step of the way. And so when we first got started and we had some other advisors that were part of the team, the idea of charging so little sounded so crazy, um, you know, and uh, a lot of the advisors said, well, what you're doing sounds like about, you know, and the market is around eight to $10,000, you know, worth of, of services. But it was important for me to first start with what I thought was reasonable for a growing young business and what's reasonable for a doctor's office. And so taking that number of $99, it's one of those numbers where you can pay it and it not really hurt most companies. And so we kind of worked from there to say, how do we now within this price point still be able to deliver the quality service that would normally cost, you know, eight to $10,000. And fortunately we're able to use technology that, and that's how we're able to speed that up. But the price point, I think, you know, the market will tell. And so in terms of the way, you know, there's also, there's profit and then there's also expense. So we had to, we have to, we reduce our expenses by using those technologies to reduce the man hours that you have to put on or woman hours um, that you have to put on to, to get a result to our clients. Ah, that's interesting. And so you guys said that you were in beta stage. Are you still in beta stage or are you available to the public already? 
we are available. Yeah. So we've been, uh, we've, we, we've, we're, we're through our beta and we're available um, to purchase. Uh, we have, we have clients and we're looking for more. And one of the things that we, we are, plat- there's, we are a platform, which means that you log in to uh, see a dashboard of your uh, compliance and to get your training and to generate policies. But we're also a real life people that um, are there with our expertise to help and set up um, the program with you. So, you know, I encourage people to, to try it out. Um, it's free for the first 30 days, so there's nothing to lose and um, only, only more information for them to gain. Oh, that's awesome. And so I know when you're starting a company, especially a software company, that especially in the early stages, the alpha and beta stages, those are probably the most important as far as growth because you're getting feedback from your early users, right, in order to refine and make your product better. So can you kind of speak on how using going through beta stage and getting feedback from people has helped your company grow and develop the product that you actually put out onto the market? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, I'll be honest with you. Our first MVP beta uh, customer did not like the product, <laughs> you know, and I, I always hear like, oh yeah, betas went great. And, you know, they did not like the product. And the reason why is kind of what I shared before is that it was built to be a technology platform, but we didn't realize how important the personal side of compliance would be. And that, you can create a platform where they can organize and assign the deliverables and track deliverables. But there's a personal side that they wanted to talk to us. They wanted to get our advice on what they should do next. And so what we we learned was that, you know, you can't just create a technology without thinking about the people and what they need. Um, and so as we went through more beta trials, we began to become more personalized and to involve ourselves more in terms of that process um, until the point where we found like we had a great balance, a balance of we are there for you and you, you we're there to support you. And we realized most people want you to do it all for them. <laughs> they're like, you know, as, even we can say that we've automated, you know, 99%, but they're like, so who's going to do the 1%? <laughs> <laughs> and funny. that's great because that's the world we live in. And so what we did was say, you know what? Don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. And then on our end, because we know we've automated that, I won't say we've got automated 99%, but just using the example, um, because we know we've take, we've automated a lot of the steps that are required, we can take it over. And all they get is the interface, the human uh, interaction that they want to know that they're doing the right thing and they're progressing in the right way. And then we take care of the rest. And, and we do it on an ongoing basis, not once a year, but every month, because you know one of the facts is that breaches um, that happen are normally related to human, some human involvement, if it's malicious or unintentional. Um, And so uh, one of the things of having training once a year is that it's not in the front of your mind. And so we change that so that we continue to do very small activities every month that will make sure that not only the leaders of the company, but everyone in the company is still remembering how important it is to ensure the security and privacy of patient data in a way that's five minutes, but just enough that we reduce the one of the core areas of vulnerabilities and breaches. Okay. So how many people are on your team currently? We have about 10 people, myself and the other co-founder, and then the support staff in development and um, officers. So we're still small, but we're hoping to continue to grow. Awesome. More personable relationships. Yeah. Interesting. So I, I like how you're able to provide value by incorporating technology plus a hands-on approach. And so I like that. And so another thing I wanted to ask you is, So you got your beta users, you guys are able to get feedback, turned a product that they didn't want into now a product that you guys feel comfortable putting out on the market. And so I know with HIPAA, it can relate to all healthcare. And even if even in healthcare, there's health tech and there's actual providers. But who would be like the 
ideal target audience or the target customer that could really take advantage of your platform? All healthcare providers, all all doctor's offices, um, anyone that sees patients, and all small and medium-sized uh, healthcare tech businesses. So we have a pretty large market. Anyone that's required to have to be HIPAA compliant or have a HIPAA compliance program, this is for them. Oh, huh, okay. Interesting. And especially those that do not have anyone on staff that has the bandwidth to to manage it. Okay, interesting. And you're offering it at an affordable price to help them. And so I really like how you're able to just share the journey of how you're able to put your team together and really the mindset and the approach that you guys had in identifying a problem within the market and learning how to provide that to a solution and especially to a large number of people. But I kind of want to talk about some obstacles and challenges that you faced in growing this company and the ups and downs that you've gone through. Well, sure. We've, <laughs> there's always, there's so many ups and downs to being an entrepreneur. I'll say that starting with the big idea, it was a big idea. And so um, with the help of advisors and understanding how to work as a startup, I'll say my first idea, and you know, this maybe is the Jeff Bezos and me is, you know, I, the global, how do we fix this problem on a global scale? Because this is absolutely a problem for healthcare industry, but security is a global problem. Cybersecurity is a, and privacy are a global problem that if you're not one of the top 10 or 20% of, of financial growth businesses in the world, you're going to have a very hard time finding the right people and being able to afford to create a cyber resilient program. So my big picture was so big <laughs> that um, trying to tackle it was overwhelming. And so I did lose out on a lot of time and resources and, you know, some frustration with team trying to solve something so ginormous, which we will solve, but we're starting first with a market with that, where we know that it's highly regulated, that we know it's very much in need of, in desperate need of some additional assistance in this space. And so as I learned how to narrow focus, it's helped us move faster. And it's helped us be more efficient and really create a story and a message that um, hits home um, in a very specific way. Awesome. So, I mean, really just dream big, right? If you're going to dream, might as well dream big. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Have a real macro perspective on the problem that you want to solve and then get real micro on how you're going to produce that solution and get that out to the market. Yes. Interesting. And so... For somebody else who's trying to start a health tech company or any sort of company within the health tech sector, what sort of advice can you give them from an entrepreneur standpoint, a business owner standpoint? Don't underestimate the value of validation. As I shared with you, going through the beta and getting the feedback and understanding what people want and understand what they care about. And doing it and asking a lot of questions has been invaluable. And then the other thing for an entrepreneur is uh, don't underestimate the value of trust and how trust is such a critical part of growing your business. And so since I've worked with other healthcare tech, a lot of other small, medium businesses on our quality work side as we develop um, technologies for them, I see so often that you can have a great product, you can have a great idea, you can have a great great team, but if the buyer doesn't trust you, they don't have a, enough information to trust you, then it can really stop you from making the progress you want to make. So um, investing in that trust, this is my, our, our posture product is one small area of trust, and that's how you trust around security. But for entrepreneurs, they also need to build that trust in terms of their branding, their how they respond to their buyers, um, how they take the time to really get to know them are all really critical pieces. Okay, you just mentioned a very interesting point right from right there. So I kind of have a follow-up question on that. Would And it'd be, how would people go about building that trust and that relationship 
with their customers and with their market? Well, I'll tell you what advisors have told me and I've done at where I, and I'll, I'll based on my biggest clients. My biggest clients have I consider our friends very and, and close. How do you do that? It's not easy. <laughs> but one of the things that entrepreneurs are great at is being creative. And so you have to leverage your network. If you have no network, you need to get some advisors that have a network and you need to get involved in, in groups that will give you an opportunity to work with the people you want to work with and, but not work with them just to sell them, but so that they can know who you are, what your company represents and build those strong bonds. Because once you have that strong bond, if you make mistakes, little mistakes, you know, at least they know that they can trust that you'll take care of those mistakes and resolve them because everyone's human. So it's not an easy one. If I had, if I had all of those right answers, then I'd, I'd probably be <laughs> retired, but <laughs> I'm still okay. figuring it out myself. I got you. As long as the intent's there, right? And then people feel comfortable with you and you're not just trying to sell them. You're actually trying to build that bond, like you said, and create those win-win relationships. Yeah. Interesting. And so, I mean, I really learned a lot just about your company and about the market and how you're going about navigating that. And so that's very interesting to me. And we're coming up on the end of the podcast. We've talked a lot about HIPAA compliance and a lot of more serious stuff. So I'd like to end on a more lighter note with something I like to call the rapid fire round. So I'll ask you a couple questions and then you just let me know whatever answer pops up in your head. Okay. Okay. Short, short answers, right? <laughs> or whatever comes to mind. <laughs> so question number one, favorite book of all time. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Oh, nice one. Yeah. Who's the most influential person in your life or career? Not to be cliche, but my mother. She's a driver and um, has helped me with the confidence that I have to be an entrepreneur. Awesome. And what is one goal you want to accomplish this year? We'd like to have a thousand companies on posture. So that's our goal. And then what is one piece of advice you would give to your 20-year-old self? Trust your intuition. Ooh. I wish I would have done that, but it took me 20 more years to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Better late than never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, I mean, that all the questions I got. Stacey, I just want to tell you thank you for jumping on and just sharing your journey as an entrepreneur and sharing your expertise and what you're doing in the health tech space and the healthcare space, really, and how you're going about offering your HIPAA compliance services to uh, help other small and medium-sized businesses out there. Because I know that what you're offering is, it, it's in demand and it's something that a lot of companies have problems with and they struggle with. So I know that the value of what you offer. So I just want to say thank you for coming on and just sharing your knowledge and expertise with us. Thank you. Thank you. It was, it was great being here and letting me share my hustle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, is there anything you want to share, promote your websites? Where can people find you and connect with you? Well, they can find me on LinkedIn, Stacy Kirk, uh, LinkedIn, or you can go to Posture. Our website is posturedup.com. Or you can find me on Twitter at Queen of Agile QA. Awesome. Love to hear from you. Awesome. Well, thanks for having. Okay. Thanks, Rod. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Health Tech Hustle with Rodney Hu, founder of 209 Digital. Tune in next week for another interview with an expert leader in digital health. <laughs>